last time we were talking about how do you go about doing a patent search and you're pretty much uh, it's a funnel you start out with a bunch of gross terms and then you classify you try to find a product class because I'll tell you all the products that are actually filed a certain area and then you can distill out the data that you want one of the big skills to really learn is how to skim patents that you can look through it very quickly uh, you could start looking at patents within like 30 seconds and it's not uncommon to go through several hundred uh -huh. the basis of all patent searches are the keywords this is the same thing with the web this is the same thing with websites and search engine optimization and that's you want to brainstorm search for terms figure out the synonyms what is it the terminology that might also be the same that helps you pull out more information and there are actually software tools that can help you with that in the same way you have things like AdWords for search engine. You can build off of references from other keywords and you can look at strategies, whether it's uh, you're looking for by subject or by author, company or product. Now, these are the two main areas where people will typically do their searches in. Either you know who actually did the patent or who the assignee is, or you're looking at a topic, which is spec, S-P-E-C. These are the most common things people do when they do patent searches. You use operators, booleans, and, and or not. And so I won't go through all this because I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Whether you're doing a field search such as inventor, uh, product class, date range. And if you need to put in a wild card, because for example, if you try to look up Dr. Cho's patents, uh, if you did show dash Steve, which is inventor, um, you're not going to find all mine because some of my patents are under Steve Cho and some of my patents are under Steve T. Cho, which is my middle initial. And so you could put a dollar sign though after Steve and all of them will pop up. Um, I'm not going to go through Boolean logic. You pretty much probably know what an or is or an and is. Uh, in the different combinations. I just have it up there for people who may not be familiar. And knowing those operators, how do they affect what you actually gets returned? And so here are a bunch of examples of information uh, that gets returned and you're interested in accelerometers, tin straps, and mouth guards. Uh, someone from ASU actually tried to push a product that had accelerators and a mouth guard. Uh, yeah, not a product of particularly <laughs> interested or crazy about because I think it has limited applications but anyway uh, I talked about product classes and the USPTO has about a thousand of them and so here you can see here like apparel bridges uh, textiles yeah they got pretty much just about everything and so you have your main class and you have subclasses so you know all the products that compete with you. So what is the process you go through in a search? Well, first, you educate yourself on keywords. Uh, get people together. Figure out what are the most relevant keywords that you're interested in. Then you do your base search. This is trying to find out what are the base number of uh, patents that you need to look at. And so it's a process where you review it and then you adjust your terms. And then when you find those terms that are actually useful, then you focus your search down and so you look more specifically and you find out, you know, are the patents interested in? Is it like a company? Is it a, is it a product class? And so that's my second iteration review. And then finally I build up a database. Well, guess what? Once I'm done doing it for the USPTO, I have to repeat it. I have to repeat it for Google and free patents and the other sites if I want to be really thorough. And again, it's because each engine misses something. Uh, here's an example. Supposing I'm interested in blood coolers. And so I'm thinking, well, where am I going to find, you know, those cooling uh, carriers that are used for uh, hospitals and also for medics on the battlefield and that sort of thing. And so, uh, I can get 20 hits, 28 hits right away, but I'm thinking, eh, I need more than that. And so if I look at Thermos, 
which is what an insulating beverage container is. I get a thousand. And then uh, the thing about those patents is that it leads me to a product class. And based on that product class, I can narrow it down more. And then finally, I can put the two together and come up with like 55 hits, which is very manageable. Uh, so using this example of a blood transport cooler, how I start off is first, I don't even know what you call this thing. And so what I do is uh, I start doing some web searching, see what products are out there, see what people call it. And so in brainstorming some words, I come up with words like blood and transporter, cooler, uh, plasma. Uh, so when I do my first search, I come up with 68,000, which is way too much. Then I refine it to put cooler in with blood and transport. 1,600 is still a bit much for me to do. But then when I put courier in it, it gets even smaller. And it gets a little too small. Now I only get five hits. But the usefulness of that five hits is that I can look at it and I can find out what product class it's in. And from that, I can go back and refine my patents. Now I come up with 270, and then I find the one that's the center of it all. That's my jackpot. And so it's that core patent that leads you to all the other patents that you need to find. Uh, and then I can look at the claims. I can see what is it that they've actually filed. And so I could see how they do it. And actually, if I want to break the patent, all you have to do is try to find three claims that you're going to improve on, and odds are you'll be able to break the patent. I, I've done it several times. Uh, yeah, I did it to my own advisor. <laughs> uh, yeah, to this day, we haven't talked about it. I, I'm not even sure he knows. Yeah, it's not something I'm going to volunteer. So that's how I go about a search. Now, what about my overall patent strategy? Well, it all depends on what I want to do. Do I want to adopt an offensive strategy, which means that I see where my competition has its patents and I start patenting around them. I try to box them in. Do I use it for defense, the heads on the stick, or am I specifically patenting because I want marketing assets? I want things that I can sell or license. Uh, if you look at a carrier group, uh, when they say like they send a carrier group to golf and a lot of you in the military uh, know this. No, they don't send one aircraft carrier out there. They send protection with it. So they send cruisers, minesweepers, uh, submarines. Basically, they make sure that that aircraft carrier is safe because that's your base of operations. Well, you should look at your same core patent the same way, the way you build your brand around it. Other product patents, trademarks, copyrights, but Everything centers around that core patent and you have to protect it. So in terms of, you know, why I should do these types of things, I need defense. I need to uh, put into the ground what is the prior, what is the state of the art. And so I prevent other people at least from coming after me. I have to look at this as part of a portfolio. I can't look at it in terms of one patent. I need to look at it as the whole body. Uh, not only that, but once I create a portfolio, I have to audit it. I have to basically trim it and don't spend money on patents that have pretty much become outdated. And not only that, but once you file, it buys you time. It buys you time in terms of international patents because that's a much longer process and they're going to rule on whether or not it's original. And so... By doing your domestic patent, you can figure out, do I want to pay the extra money for an international one? What happens if you get shot down with your patent? Well, first thing you do is find really good lawyers. <laughs> I've gotten this route before. And they can find weaknesses and things. You can just keep filing. Keep filing until something bites. The iPhone... It's rumored to have had at least four filings. They just kept filing the same damn thing until they found some patent examiner dumb enough to sign off on it. I mean, curved edges, give me a break. Uh, the easiest way to break a patent is just find it in the prior art. I've had guys who said, oh, look at my patent. I look at it and I said, I, I could break that patent if I wanted to. And they said, no, you can't. And then I 
don't go on the web and say, see, look, this picture is exactly what you're doing. It's in the prior art. Uh, what typically happens when you get a patent returned to you is you have to reduce the scope. It's too broad, and so you have to make it more specific. You can improve on two or three patent features and then refile it, or you could just ignore it and roll the dice, and that puts you in a trouble damage situation. If you have money, you don't have to do all of this. There are database and analytics out there that'll do it for you. On the other hand, those systems are pretty pricey. Here are some basic patent web links that you can look at to get information. Uh, a lot of it, as you can see, is related to the USPTO. And so wrapping up, patents aren't a cheap process, and so startups have to plan for this early on. Uh, the web affords you all the tools you need to do your research. Uh, when you find patents, it's very similar to other searches. You're funneling down and finding out what's relevant. Uh, there's a lot of information out there. The USPTO, uh, probably one of the better government agencies in a lot of ways. They actually turn a profit. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, they have a lot of instructional information. It's not the prettiest website, but it is one of the more informative ones. And if you don't want to go through all this, there are pay services that will do it for you. And of course, there are standard lawyers. Yeah. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. I'm feeling it too.